Good afternoon out there shopkeeper do it yourselfers. Today we're working on a 2007 Honda Accord. It's got the 3 liter V6 in it. The uh, complaint, you can see the all the oil dripping on top of the exhaust uh, right there. And uh, it's burning off and making a pretty good stink. So we're going to take this front valve cover off and replace the, the seal in it. Already checked the back and it's pretty clean. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this taken apart. You've already missed the most part of the fun taking this front cover off. Just two little screws, turn them a quarter of a turn, turn those a quarter of a turn, and they release right out of here. And that comes right off. And we're gonna take the ignition coils off. I got a six millimeter Allen wrench. I'm gonna take those three out and uh, we'll leave them connected. I think we can probably do that. And we'll take these two 10 millimeter bolts out, take this bracket with the harness and uh, probably take that 10 millimeter bolt out and just kind of roll this forward. We'll have to unhook it here from the EGR valve to give us enough slack. But that should be able to clear us up well, <clears throat> I went ahead and unhooked it here off the, the battery load cable. Uh, there's a pretty good rubber grommet on there. So I didn't unhook the battery, but if you think you're going to short it out, go ahead and unhook your battery. And uh, squeeze the, pull the boot back on the regulator connector and squeeze that in and then that'll slide off. And uh, the connector for the injectors or the injectors the coil pack it clips on right here on this little metal bracket on the bottom side of it that it clips on like that on the bottom side of it this little tab pull outward on it outward in this direction it would actually be lift up but pull outward on it and that releases the lock so you can slide it down off of that little sleeve right there. And then your oxygen sensor connector has got a tab on it like similar to the other one. But you push on that one, you push inward. Push inward and it slides down off of that little tab right there. I didn't disconnect it. I just released it from the little loom holder that give me enough room I can set it up there out of the way and uh, then all I got to do is take this vent tube off pull the dipstick tube out or tube the, the the dipstick and one two three four bolts and I believe that valve cover come right off well sometimes it's fourth and long and you have to punt there's two bolts back in here that I I didn't see them when I looked I didn't see them so that don't come off we have to take the intake manifold off so we got oh about uh, 11 bolts there got to take take this cover off and then there's two four six eight uh, nine or ten bolts there we have to take out and that cover or the, the upper intake will come off uh, you got a, a vacuum solenoid here I just took the, the bolt off left everything connected disconnect one to vacuum line your vacuum line going to your brake booster right here took the two bolts that holds the purge uh, solenoid valve two 10 millimeter bolts and and disconnected the vacuum line there because this this line is fastened to this metal bracket there so it's just easier to take those two bolts out disconnected the wire for the uh, uh, electric uh, throttle throttle control valve disconnect the intake air temperature sensor and uh, your uh, 
I guess that's the map sensor right there. Disconnect that and loosened the clamp on the on the intake hose and took the the vacuum or the well I guess that is a vacuum line, but it's a vent tube uh, off the valve cover. We'll get them bolts out and be ready to lift that up. I right, got that off. Now on the bottom of the throttle body assembly, there's these two uh, coolant lines that you have to disconnect. I had to answer the phone. I always take these and keep these. These come with a, a tube of uh, uh, gasket maker or something. Keep them for such things just like that. And uh, <clears throat> all of these bolts, these two, four, six, seven bolts, they're all the same length, 12 millimeter head, and then you got two 12 millimeter nuts and take that uh, intake, plant them, upper intake, plant them off. There's where your two coolant lines hook into your throttle body. And uh, that wasn't too difficult. Uh, but I had to unhook these before I could get the manifold to come up very high. And as you can see, I can't see too good, I guess, because I said there was two more bolts, and there's only one more. I don't know, my eyes are not working too good today. We'll get that last one bolt out, take that cover off. Then these valve cover bolts, the four main ones, or the six main ones, one, two, three, four, not six, four. They're all the same length, but that one that goes up there is shorter. So we'll get an accurate counter. One, two, three, four, five. Four of them are the same length, and one of them is short. And the way I did come in right here on top of the head, right underneath the valve cover gas, just tap that screwdriver in a little bit and then give it a quarter twist and it broke the seal loose. And uh, you can see right here that the, the seal is flush with the valve cover. That's why it was leaking. So we'll get that all cleaned off. Make sure you uh, cover that so you don't drop nothing down in the intake runners. You're going to have another problem. Uh, we'll clean this off with some uh, brake cleaner. Clean the valve cover. Replace these O-rings here on your uh, uh, spark plug tube so you don't wind up with oil down in them. And uh, clean the valve cover up nice and pretty and spray all that oil off then we'll change oil on this and we'll be done with it I removed the, the metal multi-layer steel gasket put a, a blue towel under there put the cover back on that'll keep the wind from blowing it off and got all that surface cleaned up and uh, sprayed brake cleaner down in there cleaned up all of that and uh, so it'll quit smoking. It'll probably stink for maybe an hour or so. And then I cleaned up the valve cover. It was all greasy all around in there. Got it all cleaned up, ready to go back together. <clears throat> so all we gotta do is get a, get a new plenum gasket set. It should come with a, a new piece to go underneath that, that top cover and uh, that piece there and uh, a new rubber valve cover seal with uh, the three uh, spark plug tube seals that go in the valve cover and uh, I looked for any signs of, of loose rockers there wasn't any noise uh, but I wasn't paid to go into all of that I think it's had a tune up in the last 20 or 30 thousand miles so should be good to go there. Anyway, we'll get the get the new uh, seals and we'll get it back together. I got the new seal put in. I don't think there's any particular way that goes in, but there's a little tab on there. 
obviously with it on there it has to go to the top at least to the bottom side of the of the gasket not necessarily in relationship to any position going around but you can't squeeze that in the hole and the uh, the little spark plug tubes that's kind of got a metal uh, deal in there so what I found just take a pair of channel locks go in there and grab a hold of it and tear the tear the ring off and then stick a, a small screwdriver down in underneath underneath that lip and give it a quarter turn and push it up out of there a little bit and then get a bigger screwdriver same thing and go in there and give it a quarter turn and there it comes out then you go to set them back in there i don't have any i've got a dual purpose inch and one eighth socket it serves a perfect a seal installer then just take your mallet and drive them in back flush like that just flush them back in and that's ready to go on and those are pressed in and they go in there pretty easy and to replace these grommet washers or uh, uh, seals separate your little um, cup washer from the from the seal and then grab that rubber with a uh, pair of pliers like that and then give it a twist I'm going to have to hold it with both hands but it, I'd give it a twist and break it yeah like that now you could probably use a knife or something but I can't use a knife because my probation officer won't let me have one and stick your new one on there that rubber should be soft enough that you can push that little shoulder right through there there you go just like that there you go and when you put them bolts in five bolts short one up here in the top the other four back here and make sure they're all started and going in square and just run them down uh, I use a one inch uh, uh, ratchet that's about uh, 15 inches long and you know got a lot of torque no I don't I just use my quarter inch and uh, run them down and they'll stop and then just give them a, another little scunch that's uh, S-K-U-N-T-C-H I think is how you spell scunch but the proper torque on that is uh, German torque specs good and tight so that's on and we'll take this uh, multi-layer steel it's called multi-layer steel because there's multiple layers there's actually I think three there we'll take that cover off and make sure we got all the crap out of the way and then we'll set the new the new gasket on there Felpro USA now this only goes on one way Cause you gotta uh, I guess that's the EGR port there anyway that's all set in there then we'll get the the manifold and put it back and we'll go ahead and fold that up out of the way now we're ready to set the manifold on there now I've kind of got it balanced and wedged on them two studs. I'll reach down there and, and uh, put this back uh, coolant line on to the one most toward the center, be to my left. I'll put it on and get the clamp on, and then I'll slide it down a little further and then put the other one on. Now I got that one put on, got the clamp back in place. Well, let's see, that one right there. Now we'll see if we can get that other one on there. Yeah, 
just like old Brooks said in Shawshank Redemption. Easy peasy, Japanese. Now I got the seven 12 millimeter head bolts. They're started in, all just started by hand, and the two nuts in there. Obviously, these 10 bolts, 10 millimeter head bolts, these two bolts, what I meant to say, they don't come out, they just hold that little uh, uh, baffle that, that uh, divides the EGR gases into both cylinders uh, or into both banks. That's all that's for, but you don't need to take that off. And uh, I've <clears throat> already got the, uh, the purge canister uh, uh, hose on, just put the clamp on and get the two bolts that hold it on to the manifold to get them in there. Hey, those bolts are all tight and the two nuts <clears throat> take them down to where they where they stop turning you know where all the slack is out of them and take them about maybe a half to three quarter of a turn additional uh, these are not head bolts so don't get too carried away your top gasket or seal it's a metal seal as well but it's just one layer and it only goes on one way if you turn it upside down your holes won't line up and obviously it goes the rounded end on this end and the straight edge on that end. Okay, bring your harness down, put that uh, retainer bolt, it's just a loom there, holds it to that upper bracket. Put your 12 millimeter nut on your alternator, use your uh, one inch impact, you know, that you take semi tires and bus tires off with and uh, Use that to stand on so you can get up a little higher. Don't use that to tighten that nut. And take your your uh, regulator uh, connector, push it in there, and it's got the little rubber that it doesn't go over that plastic, but it goes up in against it. Be sure and hook your vent tube and put your clamp on. Your two 10 millimeter bolts that holds this upper bracket and that bracket not only secures this loom but it also remember your your fancy little valve cover cover the cover for your valve cover put your uh, uh, oxygen sensor connector uh, it goes back up on the the top of that uh, little metal bracket and the other one for the downstream oxygen sensor, it goes on the bottom side of that connector. I didn't disconnect it, I just took it off of that retainer. Put your EGR valve uh, connector on, your intake air temperature sensor, and the mass airflow sensor, or not mass airflow, the MAP sensor, MAP sensor, and don't forget to connect your um, electronic uh, throttle body connector got the two 10 millimeter bolts tight for the the purge cycle solenoid or purge valve and uh, the other I don't know maybe those are both purge valves but got that connected and uh, the vacuum line for the brake booster it's on and these 10 uh, I don't know 10 10 millimeter head bolts they're all tight and these are not head bolts either they just tighten up and maybe just a quarter of a turn we'll get that top cover on my battery's about to die on my phone and don't forget to tighten your your clamp on your air intake and when you put that on make sure that that doesn't fold over that it's completely all the way around up on the throttle body uh, a lot of people do that and they suck dirty air up in there, and if you got a mass airflow sensor in here, it'll read in correctly, and you'll get a you'll get a co uh, engine code. Anyway, guys, that's how you do it. These we tightened the the six millimeter Allen head screws for the uh, ignition coils too, and they're they're snugged up. So this one here is done, other than putting the cover on it and changing the oil. You guys watch. Uh, thanks for watching. Share, like, and subscribe. Comment if you will.